We've got two new Triumph motorcycles and a new Harley Davidson. So are they a hit or a miss in my opinion? And are they gonna present a problem for the Royal Enfield Classic 350? So you probably know already, but we've got the Triumph Speed 400 and the Scrambler 400X, as well as the Harley Davidson X440, both brands built in India and available in India before anywhere else in the world. Um, and of course, we've got the Royal Enfield that we're going to talk about as well. So let's get started with the Triumphs. Overall, I think Triumph have made quite a nice looking motorcycle and it certainly fills a gap in the market there, as does the Harley Davidson. Uh, because there aren't many bikes in that power range and that engine cc size range the triumph produces 40 ps at 8000 rpm and 37 newton meters of torque at six and a half thousand rpm and it has a short stroke engine whereas the harley davidson has 27 brake horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 38 newton meters of torque at 4,000 RPM and a longer stroke engine and just looking at the power figures, obviously the Triumph's a lot more powerful, but it's a lot more revvy. So that peak power, uh, you've got to understand that peak power comes wherever it says in the rev range. And if it's high up in the RPM, obviously at lower revs, it's not gonna produce that amount of power. So I, I think in terms of riding enjoyment and just poodling around, going from A to B, the Harley Davidson engine's gonna be probably more tractable and I could say enjoyable, but easier to ride because it's, low down torque whereas the Triumph's going to want to rev more so if you're a revy kind of guy or girl you'd want to go for the Triumph and sort of thrash it a bit more but the the Harley Davidson is going to be more of a plodder I think and that's not to say plodding is a bad thing it's just like going for a walk in your favorite walking boots or going for a jog in your trainers you decide what sort of person you are and choose the appropriate bike for your needs between the Triumphs and the Harley Davidson, I think Triumph are more on point with the looks of the bike. Overall, it's a nicer looking bike. I think Harley Davidson haven't really hit the mark in terms of its looks. It does look a bit odd, um, and I think they've styled it on one of their previous models of bikes, uh, which strangely was one of their ugliest looking bikes. So I don't think that was a good place to start with. So visually, I don't think it's a winner. Triumphs, on the other hand, I think it, kind of is it's not my style of bike but i think it's going to be very popular and i think both bikes will be very popular indeed with the triumph i think the overall style is nice the tank looks lovely um it's a shame they've gone for the upside down gold anodized forks because it's very cliche everyone does it and i just don't think it looks right so that would have been nicer in i i think the right way up forks in just a normal color black or silver to match the color scheme of the bike unless your color scheme of the overall bike is black and gold and it's the right gold to match the other golds then fine but it's not so uh, i would lose the gold anodized forks now if you're the sort of person let me just change my hat around people will complain if i put my hat on the right way but uh, you can't see my face because the sun's making a shadow uh, of course that could be a good thing depending on your point of view now the harley davidson if you're the sort of person who doesn't really care what a bike looks like, you just want it to ride nicely, then you're going to love the Harley Davidson. And you could compare that to the Royal Enfield Scram or the Himalayan. And neither of those bikes are known for their drop dead gorgeous looks. So it's kind of on par with those bikes. Out of the three, the Triumph is going to win in terms of looks. One thing that does disappoint me, and you see it on a lot of bikes these days, not this one. Um, is that they've, both the Harley and the Triumph, let's talk about those specifically, they've designed the mud guards, the front and the rear, and they've got the nice shape of the rear mud guard, uh, and that looks nice. And then they stick on this plastic thing that inserts underneath that contains the number plate, the lights, the electrics, the indicators and all that. And it's like an afterthought and it doesn't really match the rest of the bike and it spoils it, these add-on bits that they stick on. And um, Triumph have stuck on this sort of silvery bit near your foot pegs, I just think all those sort of things spoil the look of the bike. They don't need it. So I think a, an initial design, perhaps it's because they have one group of people designing one part of the bike, another group of people designing another part of the bike, and they put them all together, and there hasn't been perhaps enough talking between them. I don't know. Uh, but on a bike like this, you've got the beautiful mud guard made of metal, and the light cluster and indicators and 
number plate stick straight onto it and you haven't got that extra bit of plastic that just spoils the look of it and there's nothing worse as well with these new things that stick out the back of the uh, wheel with all the gubbins on that looks even worse but um you know it can be done nicely so anyway but whatever i say it's not going to change anything because uh, the designers do what they want to do so does the royal enfield classic need to be worrying about its position in the marketplace now these two new bikes have come out or three new bikes and I would say no, because the Classic is unique in its design. It's one of the very few bikes in the world that are built today that look like a proper Classic bike. And if you're gonna want that sort of bike, you don't have really very many choices. And this is a very good choice, of course. Uh, you do have the Kawasaki W800, which is obviously in a higher CC range than the bikes we're talking about now. But really in this uh, CC range, the 350 to 400, 450 range, if you want a Classic bike, this is your one and the Triumphs and the Harley don't tick that box, so they're gonna be a different sort of buyer, really. Neither the Triumphs or the Harley Davidson or even this are really the ideal bike for the taller person plus six foot, like myself. Of course, you can ride them, uh, but visually you're gonna look big on the bike, and if you're tall, you kind of get used to that anyway. Um, but they're not made for the taller people because I believe the uh, height average in India is a little less than it is in Europe, uh, especially UK and Belgium where people are a lot taller. Uh, so that's the reason why the bikes are a little bit small because obviously they've got to build them in numbers uh, and they don't seem to want to build a bigger bike for the taller guys because there's not so many of us. We don't yet know the price of the two Triumphs or the Harley Davidson X440 for when it comes to the rest of the world. But in India, they're very competitively priced. And I'm sure when they do come to the rest of the world, they're going to be a lot higher than they are there. One other thing that's apparent on both the Triumph and the Harley Davidson, but more so on the Harley Davidson, is they've gone for the scooped out seat, which is a real shame because that fixes you in one position okay if you fit the sort of ergonomics of the bike but if you're taller you can't move back on the seat to get the right riding position uh, even though this is a semi scooped out seat i can perch on the back here and get the right riding position but when you're really fixed to one place your knees are too bent your arms are too close to the handlebars etc so it's a shame they've gone for that because a flat bench seat would have been perfect if you watch the channel regularly you'll know that i'm quite into the design and aesthetics of motorcycles and if you think about it it's such a simple thing a motorbike it's a wheel a mudguard front suspension handlebars tank seat engine gearbox rear suspension and exhaust pipe there's not much to it and to make a beautiful motorcycle it really just takes thought with those things like make a prettier tank shape you know change that um you know change the casings on the engine make something nice there all these things like the mudguard make a pretty mudguard that's functional and make nice looking lights and indicators and a pretty exhaust and a nice analog clock like a beautiful watch those sort of things can make a beautiful motorcycle uh, but modern design tends to think well let's stick some plastic things over here and let's bung some plastic under here and make some pointy bits here and change all that and add stick bits on and bolt things on and they make an awful pig's ear of it i think uh, and it could be so simple if you look at bikes from the 1980s particularly they were very simple and very good looking and design has evolved into something completely different same with cars they look dreadful don't they uh, a beautiful classic e-type jag is much better than the current jags for instance so uh, design has evolved downwards in my opinion um, let me know what you think now uh, darcy's video about his uh, license motorcycle license uh, i watched that after you've watched this very interesting video one thing he forgot to mention which is absolutely crazy is that he's had his harley davidson uh, soft tail standard restricted so that he can ride it on an A2 license. And if you don't know what an A2 license is, that's the European, UK thing, not any state thing. America doesn't have it and lots of the world doesn't have it. Uh, you're restricted to 47 horsepower. But what he didn't mention is that if he wanted to take the A license, the full license test on his bike, and now he's old enough to do so, he would have to de-restrict the motorcycle, but he can't then ride his de-restricted motorcycle to the test center to, to do the test on it because you can't ride it unless you've got the full license. So you're in a catch-22 situation. Uh, you'd have to get someone to take the bike to the place, de-restricted, uh, to do the test because you can't take the test with it in its restricted form. 
uh, which is why he's going to have to go to a riding school, a motorcycle riding school, do a few lessons because they won't just let you take the bike to the tests. So you're going to have to do a few lessons at the cost of the lessons and then take their bike to the test centre or they'll take it and they'll do the test there. Um, so it's a very complicated situation. Um, and obviously with Brexit, we could have changed that rule, but we haven't done so. Um, that's by the by. Uh, so it's a, it's a terrible shame. The system sucks. If you're interested in the Royal Enfield Classic 350, uh, I've done a recent review on this bike in a beautiful place in Wales, some lovely scenery. And then a year before that, I did a full review of it. So we've got plenty of content on this bike and a lot more of content on this bike to come because I've got it from Royal Enfield for a few months, which is great. So uh, I'm enjoying every second with this bike. It's, it's a lovely motorcycle.